This is code.org, and we are painting traffic lines? You've been asked to paint dashed lines between the lanes of traffic. Yeah, got that. Um, decompose the problem. Decompose the problem to write algorithms for moving forward as long as there are no obstacles. That makes sense. Painting lines that are two spaces long with an empty space in between from end to end as long as there are no obstacles. Any other algorithms that we need. So, getting started, import painterplus.java from backpack. I have it. Check and import. If you don't, you got to go there, copy it over, and create a new file with that name. But we got it here. And so what we're going to do is translate pseudocode from the decomposition handout to write move fast method, and then to write the painted dash method. Keep in mind, guys, if you did the previous part of this, we needed to use move fast for that. So you might already have that handy. So... That being said, I'll do a brief overview of move fast and then get right into paint dashes, just in case. All right, so I'm going to go down here. We need a method signature for starters. And so the signature for a method, just like when you sign your name, has the method's name, move fast. And then we know parentheses, right? And then curly bracket. And I always do that right off the bat. However, to create a method, we need an access and a return type so it's public is the accessible uh is how accessible it is and there's no return you can get this from looking at the other methods and kind of guess at it we'll go that more into those later but for now we just need to know we need public void and the method's name now move fast we should be walking forward right as uh the document explains hopefully as your pseudocode explains Quick code for pseudocode, guys. It happens at real big tech companies all the time. It's a thing professional programmers do. You need to be able to do it. Um, and it helps you understand before just launching into something. All right. That's my plug for that. Move forward. Collect all the paint as long as there are no obstacles. So for this one, move fast. We know we need to move forward as long as. If you see the word as long as, you need to think, that's a repeat, right? So as long as, okay. So if I was doing some pseudocode-ish type stuff for this, you know, I'd say something like, I don't know, while the painter can move forward or path clear, something like that. While the path is clear. So while the painter can move forward, what are we supposed to do? Well, it already told us move painter should move forward, right? And then what? Well, what else? Well, if there's paint, we're supposed to get the paint. So if there's paint, I should say collect paint, maybe. So painter should pick up paint. Now, this is a bit odd because how am I just going to pick up paint? How do I know there is paint there? Right? And this is an idea of what pseudocode is. It's human readable, but it should be in your own words because it's for you to understand. It's if you had to explain it to someone, you know, maybe three years younger than you or five years younger. So should I just be picking up this paint? No, because that might not exist. So we would need a condition. If uh, there is paint bucket, something like this would allow that to happen. Now, keep in mind, guys, these are conditional statements. So wall... And that's a fancy way to say we're going to ask the computer a question. For the, If the question is true, it runs the code. If the condition is not true, it skips over the code. All right, so let's hammer this out real quick. So while, and since I'm in my Painter Plus class, the Painter Plus class extends Painter, I can directly call all of these methods, right? All of the stuff that exists within Painter, all of these behaviors, also Painter Plus has access to. And we don't need to use dot notation. There's no object in this. So wall, curly bracket. What did I want to check? I said, if we can move forward. Well, we know, or hopefully, there's this Boolean return. So this method returns a Boolean, a true false value, responding to if we can move or not, which is perfect. We need a true false. So while we can move, what do we want to happen? We said the painter needs to. So move. However, if there's a paint bucket, we need to pick up paint. That's what they're asking us to do. So if I head back over here, now I messed this up once and I did is on paint. 
So is on paint is if the square is actually already painted. Is on bucket is what we're looking for. That way we know if, well, we're standing on a paint bucket, we can pick up some paint. So if is on bucket, and again, guys, this is another Boolean value, boom. And what do we want to do? We want to take the paint. However, is that all we want? If we're on a bucket, we're just going to take one paint and we're good. We're just like, that's, that's enough paint for me. No, we need to get all of it. And we won't with this. So let's just walk through this piece by piece real quick. What's going to happen when I run this? Well, I'm going to have a painter. We'll say wherever. Let's put my painter right here, for instance. Okay. Wall can move. So first I ask the computer this question. Hey, computer, can my painter move? And the computer says, I don't know. Let me look. And if I was standing here, it looks forward, I'm facing this way. Yes, it responds true. Since this is true, everything in the curly brackets can go now. And it says, okay, so I can move. So this says, painter, hey, get moving. Plop. All right, now what happens? Well, now we have a condition inside of this, right? Now we're going to ask another question. Hey, computer, am I on a bucket? That's false, right? The computer says, I don't know. Oh, no, you're not on a bucket. So this is false, and we're going to skip over this code in these curly brackets. So the computer says, nope, that's false. So they don't try to take paint. We're not going to do that. That was false. Hit the bottom, and now we're at the end of the loop. Well, loop, we have to go back to the top and check to see if we have to repeat it. Can I move? If I'm standing there, yep, I can move. What do I do? Droop, I have to run the code then. I do move forward, plop. I ask the computer again, hey, computer, am I on a bucket? Computer says, false, I'm not. Hits this, goes beneath, hits the bottom of the loop. I have to check again. Hey, computer, can I move? I can. That's not true. So I move forward one, plop. Am I on a bucket? This time it's true. And therefore, since this is true, I'd be on a bucket. I have to take paint. But I'm only going to take one. Now, thankfully, we have a handy method up here somewhere that we made. Take all paint. And what that really is, guys, by the way, it's a loop. And we can use this to our advantage. It's just going to loop over as long as we're standing on that bucket. Because once the paint is gone, the bucket will disappear. So, boom. That way, we will keep taking paint till the bucket is gone. And we have it all. All right. That should be our move fast. Let's just check real quick. And that's a super brief version. I go into more detail in the uh, video for the other portion of this that uses that. So make sure to check those out as well. And so let me just instantiate the object, right? What type of object? We need a... Painter plus, uh, and that's going to be, I'll name it my painter. Bam. All right, now we have our object. Let's test this out. And let me hit run. Bam, and now we should stop. Perfect. Okay, so now we need to start the other method, which is painting. Let's see what they want it to look like. Okay, so we paint the first two, we skip one, we paint two, we skip one, got it. All right, there's going to be a few ways to do this. They want us to create this, paint dashes. Okay, so I'm headed back over here, and I'm going to go ahead. I know the method name, and as I said earlier, method signature, we have to write, just like when you sign your name, you have to write the method's name, and we've been using public void. This is an access modifier. This is the return type. For now, just follow the pattern and trust it. Public void, we'll get more into those later. Public void, here's the method name, paint dashes. Like I said, it's a method signature. Parentheses, curly bracket. All right. Translate your pseudocode. So for painting of dashes, what I would want to think about, and we could take a look, make sure you have mapped this out to some degree. Otherwise, you're going to do worse on the assignment. Um, let me, sorry, true. All right, let me copy this over for reference. Boom. Okay. So let me go, doo -doo -doo, boop, there we are, and then blup, 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 there we are. Okay, paint lines that are two spaces long with an empty space in between. All right, so if I was trying to put this into my own words, which is what pseudocode is, let's think about it. Paint lines that are two spaces long with an empty space in between from one end to the other as long as, if you see as long as, think loop. So I know right away we need wall. As long as there are no obstacles. So wall, 
path is clear, another way of saying that is painter can move, right? While the painter can move, what do I want to do? Paint lines that are two spaces long with an empty space in between. Okay. What would I need to be able to do that, though? So you could just trust that you have enough paint, and I'll start by doing that. But what we would do is paint spaces, two spaces long with an empty space in between. So I would do something like paint, right? Move forward, paint, move forward, and then move forward again, because that way we skip over one. So I'd have a few issues with this, but that's like the basic idea of this. We're going to need conditions in this, right? Because otherwise we'll hit things. That being said, why don't we just start in on it and figure it out as we go? So I know wall, while the path is clear, we know how to do this. We've done that a bunch. Wall, we can move. Wall can move. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, so as long as we can move, what do we want to do? Well, we want to move, right? That's a good place to start with this. However, do we? If we look at the starting thing here, right? We don't start moving immediately. We start painting. We turn and we paint. So actually, boom, boom, let's paint. Um, For now, I'll just throw white in here. Cool. All right, so we're going to paint and we're going to move. And then what did I have here? Well, then we're going to paint <laughs> and then we're going to move. Okay. If you're repeating yourself with code, there's probably a shorter way, but we'll do it for now. And then I was thinking we're going to need a blank spot, so I'll move again. All right. Boom, right? As long as I can move, I'll move forward. I'll paint a white line or a white dot. I'll move forward again, paint another one so they're next to each other. And then I'll move forward twice, so I skip a line or skip a dot. Let's see if, what this does. Oh, I'm going to be up here, right? So I'm going to need to turn right, and then let's run our new thing. Does it work? Yeah, it works. Would I give it full credit? Do I like it? Definitely not. We should be doing some checks, because there can be issues with this. Also, we're repeating ourselves in code. And if you're repeating yourself, there's probably maybe sort of kind of a better way. All right. So I have as long as we can move, what do I do? Well, I paint and I move. We should be checking, though. What if we hit a wall? So this first move, guys, that's fine, right? We're good there. We know that we can move. We checked right here. However, I'm not certain I'm not if I'm at a wall yet by the time I'm here. So what I would want is if can move, right? Boom, boom. And that way, there's a condition here, too. So that way, I don't actually move in or take any steps before this happens, right? And each time we move, we should be checking. This prevents errors in the future. You want to code not for one tiny little situation. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that and move this as well. Okay, something else that I would like to see, um, uh, well, is paint. How do I know we have paint? So I would like a student to do if mm, has paint, I think is a method for painter. Let's see. Yep, has paint. So now I could check. See, I'm going to check to make sure the painter has paint beforehand. That way, I know. That way I'm sure, and we won't get an error from that. And I might even do that again here. Because once again, then we can be sure that that will never cause an error. Now, this looks like a whole lot more code when the first one ran. This is more technically correct. Let's try it out. That's looking pretty good. I'll say a few things. One, don't do this. We want a color. We want them to be able to choose the color. And we've seen this before, right? They can input a color, so the user, string, color. String just means a word, or maybe it's a sentence, but really it's going to be a word in this situation. So we're going to have a parameter, string, color. And that way, instead of writing the color, which is called hard coding, writing the string white, I can just put my variable there, 
color. Now I'm going to write it here. And they could choose that color. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. I'll have to write now. Put, uh, let me go wild. I'll put red here. Oh, what happened here? Paint. Oh, has paint. Shouldn't have it. It's going to be down here. Now, guys, there are 10 different ver versions of this that are correct and that work. You might not want to do the check, the conditional check on paint, because you might say with instructions, you're pretty sure you just need to move forward. The goal here is that you accomplish it and you do so cleanly. There's not always a one correct answer with code. It's what makes it pretty cool. Really cool, actually. All right, that being said, bam, 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 onward.